and how to hand hold a camera if you have to. All right, so here's a famous person. This is pretty artsy, it's unusual and weird. Um, here's another really interesting one. This is a student work, um, but the lighting is really cool and it's, it's an unusual photograph. It has a lot of visual interest. Here's one where the shapes, and look at how the sun is so low in the sky and how long the shadows are. Part of what makes this interesting is the color that comes from the sun being low in the sky, that kind of really warm yellowish tone um, that makes it, that has a really good feel. We call it the sweet light, right? So it's either early morning or late afternoon and with the long shadows and it's really fantastic. Um, repetition is really fun even when it's not exactly repeated the same. Um, there's a lot of people that like these photo booth photos because they're just a little bit different on each one. Um, and you have a fun repetition that's just different enough that it gives it visual interest. Okay. Once again, check out the rule of thirds on this one. Now here's one where the color is in the repetition of shapes um, is, is the actual penguin. So they're organic shapes that are repeated. Um, but then the color is what brings it together. Now notice the sun is really, really low in the sky. And this photographer used a, uh, this photographer used a flash. And without that flash, we would just see dark shapes silhouetted against the, the glow of the sunset. But with the flash, it's brought that beautiful yellow color of the penguin on the penguins. Um, out and it kind of matches that yellow of the sunset and it's just a fantastic photograph. It's one of my favorite ones, uh, nature ones. Here's one where the student has used uh, a slow shutter speed, did some motion blur, um, but also used a flash. So this is the, what makes this one is the flash. Um, and it just looks like they're going into some kind of a transporter and maybe uh, zooming into the future there. It's a fun one. Um, and you can stage art photographs as well. So here's one where they've they've poured some sand or powder over this person and jumping, and it's really cool. You've got that motion blur, but a little bit of freeze motion too. Okay. Have some fun with what you're doing. All right, this is contrast. Here's some repetition. This is large, like these are like wall size, right? Here's another wall size installation. Once again, there's a lot of repetition of shape and color in there. This is a staged photograph. So the artist actually created this environment and then took a photograph of it. And this is another one that I find kind of spooky. Here's where they've created a three, uh, kind of a 3D with a cube. This is a, uh, these are actually, let me see if I can get this back up just a little so you can see that a little better. There we go. Um, this is manipulation of a, of a photograph. So this artist actually took old photographs and erased or scraped off some of the uh, emulsion on it to, to get this, what I think is kind of a really cool effect on them. You can see a little bit better there. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Check out the rule of thirds, see if this works. Here's another, this is a famous one by Imogene Cunningham, one of the, the shows, uh, the movies that you guys watched on artists. Now this is pretty simple, but it's also kind of spooky. You wonder what what uh, this uh, what the artist was was wanting to get across here. Um, you see the, maybe someone someone's hanging from a tree, um, but we don't know if they're hanging from a tree because they're hanging like a lynching, or if someone's just being playful and you know popped up and grabbed a tree branch. Um, but once again, this uses contrast, right? Dark against light. And you can really see the, the impact of that. Um, it also follows the rule of thirds, you guys. So it's a really fantastic one. Here's another good one. Repetition of shapes. Look at the lighting on there. So dramatic. All right. Follows the rule of thirds. Go. Another one. 
another real dramatic one. So this is a famous, really famous one. Um, when you first see, see this, what do you think it looks like? Um, a lot of people tell me they think it looks like two people embracing or a woman's back. Um, but guess what? It's a bell pepper. And Edward Weston, um, who I really highly recommend when, when you get a chance to go see the Weston Gallery in Carmel and see some of his works in person because doing this on the internet and looking at these things is the it just doesn't do justice and this is an iconic photograph it's absolutely fantastic so um, i highly recommend that you do that this is uh, uh, bell pepper just a bell pepper but the the lighting look at it's isolated against a background so that you don't really see anything else going on um, really fantastic here's another one Really good photograph. This is one of my favorites. I think this this is one that's in your book. Um, another one that uses contrast, right? Dark against light. So the background's light, foreground, the, the subject is dark. It's another really fantastic one. This is done as a double exposure. If you have an old old camera, a film camera, you can actually do double exposures. You can't do it with digital, unfortunately. It just doesn't work out. And believe me, Photoshop doesn't do it justice either. Um, so a double exposure, there's a, a, a photo of a tree superimposed in a shower, which really has an interesting and very dramatic effect. All right, here's another one that uh, uses repetition of shapes. And then it's broken up by the bicyclist who happens, just happens, to follow the rule of thirds, right? So I want you to keep thinking about that. I know I keep harping on it all the time, um, but it's really, it, it really makes a huge difference. So this, you guys, this is so cool. Now, this is just the ocean, right? With a slow shutter speed. So you've got motion blur on the water. The rocks are in sharp focus, but the water's moving, so it makes it look like it's fog just kind of drifting around. Here's another one. Right, beautiful sunset, long exposure, so the colors are really rich and deep. And that's just the ocean moving. That's what that looks like, but it looks like just the fog is covering, or blanketing the earth. Maybe it look, almost could be a scene from Mars, huh? Um, and here's a slow shutter speed uh, with, this, this is a lot of motion blur on this, but this, this lights. too dark there let me go lighten it up a little bit here's another one where it's been a long exposure right you'd want to use a tripod for that but we'll talk about what to do with uh, for tripods and stuff and let me see if I have one other if I have another uh, if I have so here we'll go through these pretty quick so some of these were turned in as art and you'll see that there's a couple there is one for art that's a good one that's okay too dark you just can't, can't see the details this is one i like a lot the repetition of shapes the lighting's really inter really good it has a good dramatic feel to it Sometimes a macro could also be art. This one follows, doesn't quite follow the rule of thirds, but it has a really good, uh, this. So look at the horizon line here, it's tilted. This does not do the, the photograph justice. So make sure you follow that rule of thirds. The horizon line should probably be up. They should probably have moved the horizon line to right about there in the photograph, right? So just a, bit, a little bit lower the, of the camera angle so that you have that rule of thirds. And then make sure that the horizon line is straight, otherwise it feels like it's falling off. So here I fixed it so it complies with the rule of thirds. Let me see if I can we'll darken it up a little bit so you can see it better, there we go. Um, so yeah, this is, this is what you want. And you can you can change that a little bit in um, uh, in the photo editing program I'm going to show you guys in class. 
So that's it for the lecture and uh, happy photo taking. Make some fantastic art with your camera, okay? I'm looking forward to seeing what you got.